It is a P view with atherolam. I will administer a stable mixture containing botulinum toxin. I will introduce facet joint injection in case of primary stenosis. I will explain my logic how it works. Today, I'll share clinical practice of facet joint injection in case of primary stenosis. She has relieved her radicular pain with this protocol for a long time. She did not show any response to the conventional transfemoral steroid injection. I think you would find this weird. Is it crazy to do facet joint injection in case of a foraminal stenosis? Usually, we choose transfemoral or epidural injection in case of foraminal stenosis or radicular pain, not facet joint injection. Likewise, we prefer facet joint injection or middle branch block technique in case of facet joint pain. I'll introduce facet joint injection in case of primary stenosis. I'll explain my logic how it works. It is the serial sagittal T2 A2 image. Sorry for the poor quality of the image. I should have shown an oblique sagittal image. It shows primary stenosis at the right L45 and L34, especially at the L45 level. Here is my logic. In the narrow the tunnel, we will face a technical difficulty to put the needle in the primary space. The protruded and swelled nerve root will be the obstacle. Also, delivering and staying enough steroid in the narrowed primary space is almost impossible in severe primary stenosis. The facet joint is formed in the posterior border of the primary space. The superior recess and anterior capsule are neighboring to the primary space. Many degenerative facet joints are communicated to the epidural and primary space, and in turn, steroid in the facet joint will flow to the epidural space. The steroids in the joint space can stay longer than transforminal steroid. How can steroids work in the intact joint capsule? The lymphocytes engulfing steroids migrate and show an anti-inflammatory effect on the primary space. The sensory nerve terminals of the facet joint pass the neurotransmitters through the medial branch to the dorsal root ganglion and dorsal horn. The sensory nerve terminals is an obsession target point of the botulinum toxin of the facet joint. The botulinum toxin observed in the sensory nerve terminal will be transported to the ganglion and dorsal horn. So the botulinum toxin achieves analgesic action at the same level at the dorsal root ganglion and spinal cord. If you missed this video, please review it. Then you will understand my logic of facet joint injection of botulinum toxin in spinal stenosis. I will start from the CM AP view. Let me turn the CM to the right ipsilateral oblique view. Let me clean the surgical site one more. Before facet joint injection, I'll administer steroids into the L4 infraneural space. I'll introduce the needle very carefully. It is very often to puncture the disc in the severely protruded disc. AP view. The control lateral oblique view to measure the needle depths. Contrast media injection on AP view. I'll administer steroid mixture which contains 50 unit of botulinum toxin, 30 mg of triamcinolone. It is my main target, the right L45 facet joint. I'll go from posterior inferior to superior direction, targeting the inferior recess.
Let me turn to ipsilateral oblique Siam view. Contrast media. It is a P view with atherogram. I will administer a stable mixture containing botulinum toxin. Next target is the right L34 facet joint. I cannot observe the clear inferior margin of the facet joint on AP view, so I turn to the ipsilateral oblique CM view and approach. Contrast media injection. It is a facet joint arthrogram on AP view. Let me administer a steroid mixture. Did you understand my logic and practice? Thank you for watching. See you in the following videos.